this morning, I'm going to talk to you on the subject of Jesus or me. Jesus or me in 2020. Now, we've been talking a lot about setting it up for 2020. The first month of the year, I've been laying it out. He's everything I need uh, and everything I do. Who remember last week's sermon title? Anybody? What was last week's sermon title? Y'all remember? And he fights for me. Don't he fight for you? Yes. Some of you, when you couldn't fight for yourself, who fought for you? Jesus, Jesus fights for me. Amen. Yes. But, but this morning, I want to take us to another level because I want you to grow in 2020. I want you to receive all you desire from God. Healing in your body. Healing in your mind. Blessings in your house. Where God can touch your family who's lost and unsaved. The prodigal sons, the prodigal daughters out there. Amen. Amen. And bring them home. Not, not just bring them in the house, but bless them. Amen. Amen. But you got to make a choice. Hallelujah. Listen, when I chose Jesus over 28 years ago, I had no idea what he's going to do in my life. It, it, was, it was faith. Amen. What is faith, y'all? The substance of things, what? You hope it. That if I put my trust in this God, I don't see that somehow he's going to do what I need him to do. Amen. Hey, Jessica, what's up, girl? Good to see you this morning. Amen. But look at God. But, but see, you got to make a choice. Now, I'll be honest with you, sometimes it's not easy to choose God. Can I be honest? It's not easy to choose God. Anybody ever had a difficult time choosing God over your self? Me? I ain't gonna lie. There are times when I don't want God to be close by, I don't want God to be in the area, I want God to be on the next block. Amen. Because I'm about to do something I want to do. Hallelujah. Anybody ever been there? Yeah. Come on. Now y'all act like y'all like y'all so holy on Sunday. Y'all know y'all can say that. They need to say that. Come on. Come on, we all, we all been there. Come on now. <coughs> I've been there where well, I didn't want God nowhere around me because I want to do what I want to do. And then my spirit quickened me. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. And when that spirit quickens you, I don't know about you, but the Holy Ghost out a whole lot of that come on. <laughs> Woo! I can feel that bad day is about to come at any minute. Hallelujah. Anybody ever whip your children? Come on, let me see if you whip your children. Anybody ever whip your children? Come on, let me see. You ever whip your children? <laughs> Butchie, Butchie, ain't gonna be my home. <laughs> you say, don't you dare not raise your hand, mama, because you can whip me. Thank you, Butchie, for being there. Thank you. 
was in the back yard. She said, what you doing? And she said, you know, that's your mama got And her and my mama drank coffee together every afternoon. So that afternoon, my mama went and drank coffee. And she came back to the community. What you doing digging up my garden? What you putting in my garden? <laughs> I wanted to lie. I really wanted to lie. But something inside me wouldn't allow, allow me to lie. I, 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 I had some weed. <laughs> Go get that devil. <laughs> At that moment, I didn't know nothing about prayer. I wasn't a Christian. I didn't know nothing about Jesus. I was rolled, I grew up Catholic, so I went to church, I went to confession, and I was good. But I didn't have a personal relationship with God, but at that moment, at that moment, I knew I needed to have some in intervention. Yes. So I cried out, Mama, please. She said, no, son, I'm doing this for your good. <laughs> Why did I tell that story? Because Jesus is doing things for your good. You may not want it, you may not like it, you may not appreciate it, but Jesus is doing things for your good that's unseen. And you can't see it, you can't identify it, you don't know why it's happening, but God is doing something for your good, and you ought to thank him for doing something for your good. Amen? Amen. So this morning, I want to preach a sermon called Jesus or Me in 2020. Amen? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for what you did on Calvary. God, you died on that cross for my sins. Even before I was born, even before, God, I came into existence, you died for me. God, you died because you knew that one day I would need a Savior. And today, January 2020, I need a Savior to come into my life and set me free and transform me from the old to the new. God, whatever my life is doing, God, you can do it better. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say Amen. Amen. Now, you was in Bible study Wednesday night. You got a taste of what I'm about to do. My first slide, slide number one. It has to be his, is his word and my choice. His word and my choice. Let me explain that to you. The Bible says in Joshua chapter 24, verse 15, he says, but if you refuse to serve the Lord, then choose today whom you will serve. All right. That's the word of God. Can I get it? Yeah. He says, if you, if you refuse to serve the Lord, see, everybody don't want to serve God. Can I get it? Yeah. Everybody don't want to be in the kingdom of God. Can I get it? Some people don't want nothing to do with God. They don't care about God. They don't care about your God. They only care about their individual needs. Amen. It's a world out there that don't care about your salvation. Amen. I know it's important to you. I know you take it serious. I know you love the Lord. I know you serve the Lord. I know you appreciate God. But there are people around you that can care less about you and your God. How do you deal with that? How do, you, how do you interact with people who don't care about your salvation? And there are people who know about God, but they only use God when it's necessary. You, ever, you know the people? They only call on God when trouble hits. Amen. You know them kind of folk? And then you've got folks who love the Lord, who serve the Lord, but they know what they do. They're so high-minded with Christ, you can't tell them that. They know everything. Amen. And that's, that's okay, but then you got those people who realize that today I would not be here had it not been for the Lord. Amen. I would not be here had it not been for his grace and mercy. Anybody? So, so if the Bible tells me his word never changes, come on now. His word will be with us forever. Yeah. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will be with you for what? Yeah. Ever. So it's his word, but it's my choice to follow the word. Yeah. And the word don't change. Society changes. Yeah. People changes. Culture changes. Tradition changes. But his word never changes. Yeah. Come on now. And I got, I got some people 
this week. Because I was preaching in the school and I said if you fornicate, you're going to hell. Because fornicators should not receive the kingdom of God. If you are lesbian or homosexual, the Bible says it is a sin. Let's see what well, in this society, in these times, and, and, and the way things have changed in the world today, that's old. We don't live like that no more. God says, hell, praise God. That's for you, but as for me. Next verse says, but as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. Now listen, I'm not getting in a fight. But I want us to understand, his word, my choice. I don't have to choose to serve God. There are some circumstances. There are some situations that are extenuating that causes us to make some decisions and choose some things that, that we have to deal with. But again, that's a choice. See, when you come to the house of God, God's house is not a place for compromise. The world is a place for compromise, not God's house. And I know we can do a lot better, but, but we have to compromise. We have to give in. We have to give and take a little bit. And I know it's uncomfortable. I know, but listen, God never said it would be easy. But if you really want to go to heaven, you've got to make some tough choices. I love you so much, but I cannot come to this pulpit and compromise the word just because I don't want to make you upset. Just because I want to do my thing and I want to qualify to eat. Amen. And if I'm doing something outside the will of God, then I'm judged. Amen. And I got to deal with God my self. So I'm not telling you something I don't have to live. I have to live this life every day. Every day I'm like you. I got to get up in the morning and I have to make a choice. Is his word or my choice? Listen to what the word says. He says, he says, but as for me, everybody say me. Me. Who's me? Me. me. <laughs> you know, and I keep telling y'all this over and over again. There's going to be a time where you got to give an account. Yes, yeah. And if I want my children to, to be blessed, amen, I don't want to bring a curse upon my child. Because you know what you know, what, what the father does, the sins of the father will visit their children. The sins of the mother will visit their children. And you got to be careful what kind of example you're setting for your children. And your children's children. And when you come to the house of God, this is not a place where you come from life. This is where you come to grow and understand and get the truth. Because that truth will set you and it's not to make you feel bad, but if it does, then that means you have a conscience. Yes. If it makes you feel like you got to make a decision, that means you've heard the truth. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Anybody that got to go to court yeah. and face a judge? Oh, yeah. And when that judge says, this is my verdict, yeah. whether you agree with it or not, what you got to do? You got to deal with it. <laughs> Amen. That judge will say five years in prison. What? What? You buy the oil. You support the dude. The judge said. But I paid you a lot of money. I know. But the judge said. And when the judge says what? What you got to do? But what if it's your child? What if, what if it's your wife? What if, if it's your husband? What if it's you? So, so if you won't deal with what the man says, why can't we do it what God says? I know that don't make no sense to some of y'all. <laughs> but you think if a man going to tell me I got to go to prison for five years, who are you do to tell me I got to go get locked up for five years? You ain't got that kind of power. Yes, I do. I'm the judge. I've been given by the state of Georgia the authority to lock you up. That's a lot of power to give a person, ain't it? Ooh, lot of that's why I'm good friends with the judges. Hallelujah. <laughs> hey, Judge, how you doing? Hey, Judge. You can see, Judge. You need anything? Oh, I'm good, Judge. Well, call me if you do. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. You got to know somebody sometime. Amen. Yeah. So every now and 
in, I like to go into the judge's chambers and just check on him. Hey, judge, you okay? Hey, John, how you doing? Oh, I was out there checking on you. You good? You need anything, judge? I'll be with you. And they know what that means. You, you, you know what that means. When I say, Mickey, call me if you need something. Mickey, you know what that means, sir. Amen. But Augustine, you need it. You call. And you know that it's an unspoken rule. If something really necessary that you got to have, my, you know to call that number. And you don't call it just to waste time. You call it when you really need that help. Amen. Amen. I had a friend of mine, and he was a good friend. So he came to me and said, I need y'all to represent you. I said, man, I don't really like representing friends because they're going to fall out. He said, no, man. I said, dude, okay, I'll charge you for a per diem on the phone. I said, that's the money that you can't have to put up with. But that was a good friend. So, so, so when, 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 when I had to go before the judge, I knew that was my friend, and I knew I could, I could. Everybody had to pay Pac Man. You don't eat your Pac Man and tell him to tell you, Wee! Hey, man, you ever put a Pac Man? Man, you don't eat that Pac Man and tell him to tell you, Wee! Hey, man, you don't eat that Pac Man and tell him to tell you, Wee! Hey, man, you don't eat that Pac Man and tell him to tell you, Wee! Hey, man, you don't eat that Pac Man and tell him to tell you, Wee! Hey, man, you don't eat that Pac Man and tell him to tell you, Wee! Hey, man, you don't eat that Pac Man and tell him to tell you, Wee! Hey, man, you don't eat that Pac Man and tell him to tell you, so, 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 this person, and, and, and I mean, they really needed some help, and I knew they came to me because they knew I had to hook up. That's why I charged them extra money. Because I knew I'd rather eat that Pac Man pellet for them. That's what Jesus does. You know what I'm just saying? You know you should be guilty, or you know you're guilty. You know your sins have found you out. Amen. And you know you're about to face judgment. Amen. And who you call on the name of? And if somehow you think Jesus is going to eat that pack man pillow and save your little table. How many of us look at Jesus like that sometimes? Come on. We know we did it. We know we're guilty. We know that our sins have found us out. But somehow we want to magically call on the name of Jesus. And, and we want to say, but but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And you know you ain't serving God, you lying. You're trying to trick God. I'm going to get there, I'm going to preach my sermon, I'm going to lay a foundation. Because a lot of us don't realize his word never changes. And sometimes you got to pay the penalty. Anybody have to, have to pay the penalty? For their sins. And when you finally get that service done, you feel better about it because you, you paid your due, right? So that's really good in the statement this morning. Y'all ready? I've made my point. So now what you're saying, I'm not coming at you from a place of, of mocking you or trying to hurt you or put you down. But I want you to realize how ridiculous it sounds sometimes when we put ourselves in that situation because we already knew what we were about to do and we did it on our own merit, right? We did it because we wanted to do it, right? And we, we act the way we want to act because we chose to act that way, right? And now we want God to give us a pass. Y'all ready? So in 2020, I got to choose if I'm going to choose Jesus or I'm going to choose me. So if I choose Jesus, he will bless me. Can I get him? Amen. But if I choose me, I got to deal with So, so when, when, when you get into the situation and you're about to make a stupid, unrealistic, crazy, selfish decision, think of these three things. Y'all ready? Number one, is it life or death? What I'm about to do, will it create life in me or will it cause death in me? Come on. If I'm going to make this decision, is it life or is it death? Look at what the Bible says. Come on, go to Deuteronomy chapter 30. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 30. See, God gives us instructions, man. When you go to Deuteronomy chapter 30, and it says in verse 19, it says, this day. Everybody said this day. This day. Remember what he said earlier? He says, choose them today whom you will serve. So when you go to Deuteronomy 30, verse 19, it says, this day I call the heavens and the earth as a witness against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. See, when I choose Jesus, I got to make a choice. As for me and my house, we will serve the, as a choice you make to serve the Lord. 
But did he say, but I take before you life and death? Life and death. But did he give you the answer? He says, Ron Schubert. He says, now choose life so that you and your children may live. Because remember, the sins of the father will visit the children. And the sins of the mother will visit the children. But God says, I place before you life and death, blessings and curses. But then he says, you choose life. See, it's his word, but it's my choice. Am I going to choose life or am I going to choose death? So when I'm making a decision, is it a life or death decision? Amen. Are you with me so far? The second part of making the decision is this. Is it all or nothing? You ever go in all the way? I am. If I'm going to go, I'm going all the way. Amen. Amen. I told Ron, I said, boy, y'all going to have an anointed service tonight. Y'all going to have a great time tonight. But I got a choice tonight. Ruth Chris Steakhouse or Brian and whatever what you give me your service tonight. Uh, that a worship. It's a choice I got to make. Augustine, Ruth Chris Steakhouse. Oh, the night of worship. <laughs> oh, no, you ain't going to me. <laughs> I had to make a choice. Well, you're the pastor of the church. Ruth Chris Davis. I'll call, I'll call you later on tonight. See how it went. Hey, y'all see that little hole in the door, Scott? He's my young adult pastor. That's his job. Hallelujah. I'm doing mine right now. When I get done, my job is finished. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. It's his job tonight. Pray much, whether I'm here or not. So, not a worship. Ruth Chris Stahouse. Hey, we're going to read Chris Stahouse. You coming with me? Amen. She made a choice. She made a choice. So, so how many of us, we got to go all in? Or nothing at all. You know, sometimes it's okay to do nothing. Sometimes we think we got to do it all. Ah, no, 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 no. Sometimes it's okay to do nothing at all. Because sometimes people come to me, they want me to make a decision for them, and I will not take your decision for you. Ah, uh -uh, unless you got a real, real life or death situation, and you're confused. And I'm going to walk you through the process, but ultimately you're going to have to make that decision. Amen. Because the decision made by me is a decision I can deal with. Right. But if someone makes a decision for me and it don't go like this, I'm going to blame it on them. Yeah. Amen? So, so when you make the decision, look, look at Philippians 2. I want you to go in the Word. Come on. Go to Philippians 2. I want you to get this in the Bible. Philippians 2, 3 says, do not be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Right. So if I'm going to if it isn't all or nothing, am I doing it to, 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 to impress others? Am I doing it out of selfish conceit? But look what the Bible says. He said, he said, be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. That's hard to do. It's hard to put somebody above yourself. But God said, if you won't do it, don't do it. Don't do it to be seen. Don't do it so you can look holy. Don't do it because you think you're better than somebody. He said, do it out of humility. And that's when God will bless you. And the third thing when you make a decision in 2020, you ready? Is it now or never? See, some of you can't wait to make a decision. Some of you got to make a decision today. Because look what he says. Look what he says in the word. He says, he says, but if you refuse to serve the Lord, then choose today whom you will serve. I'm telling you, so to make a decision to serve the Lord is a, is a real, let me, let me try to put it in a way that you understand. It's an eye-opening decision. So once you make a decision to serve the Lord, guess what happens? <laughs> you will Woo, that's a big decision to make, isn't it? But look what he said. He says, is it now or never? Let me give you 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. He says, for he says, in the time of faith, I have listened to you, and I've heeded your call, 
I have helped you on the day of deliverance, the, the day of salvation. He said, Behold, now is truly the time for a gracious welcome and acceptance. What? Of you from God. Behold, it is the day of salvation. But it's another verse that says at the right time. At the right time, God showed up. Why couldn't today be the right time for you? Why couldn't today be the right time when you choose salvation over selfishness? You see, if I want to choose, see, remember what I said at the beginning of my sermon. Jesus or me. His word or my choice. Every one of us got to make choices every single day. But why not choose Jesus today and make Monday a better beginning of the week? Come on, man. Come on. How many of you want the blessings of, of Abraham in your life? <laughs> well, that's why you got to choose it. You got to choose to be blessed. How many of you rather be healed or, or choose sickness over healing? Come on. No, 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 really, really. How many of you want to choose prosperity over poverty? Come on, come on. But see, it, it all starts with the decisions you make. Amen. Look, I love everybody, but I don't hang out with everybody. Listen, if I want to prosper, I got to be around people who, who's not lazy. Amen. I got to get up and go to work. Amen. You can't wait for a handout to prosper. Come on now. Listen, if you want to if you want salvation, you got to choose it. Because unless a man or woman make a decision to follow Jesus, you can't be saved. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Romans 10, 13. So if I make a decision to follow the Lord, what do you think God's going to do for me? He's going to give me my heart desire. He said, trust in the Lord. Lead not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path. And he said, delight yourself in the Lord. He will give you the desires of your heart. Amen. You know I'm a bad dude. I'm a bad dude, man. I'm a bad dude. I got authority. I can prove it to you. I got authority. I got real authority. You know what? You sit here listening. God says, every time I accept him as my Lord and Savior, he gives me a gift. What's that gift, y'all? Salvation. Come on, now. You can't buy salvation. You can't work your way to salvation. Am I right? You can't do enough work to get salvation. Salvation is a free gift given to you by God when you accept him as your Lord and and with that gift of salvation, now I have a place in heaven. Yeah. I got real estate. Yeah. Amen. Because the Bible says he's going to prepare a place for yeah. That means I own something in heaven. Yeah. Amen. I, I got real estate in heaven now. Because he said he prepared me a place. Yeah. And he said, he said in our Father's house are many rooms.
See what you're doing now. You've made a choice to walk according to his word. See, they don't in between, y'all. In that tradition no more. It's the word of God. Come on now, it's not society's rules no more. It's the word of God. Come on, when you accept accepted as your Lord and Savior and you come to live inside of you, he sets you free. And the only way I go back into bondage, I take it, the ways of the world. But I'm not of this world. I'm of a heavenly kingdom. And I gotta walk according to the word. And see, that word will be contradictory to the world. That word will, see, that's why I tell y'all, it's not that I'm kicking the fight, I'm trying to help us stay saved. I'm trying to help us get the blessing. I'm trying to help us walk in the promise. And let me tell you something, if you need help, the only way you're going to get help, you have to ask for it. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. So if I need help, this is anything too big for God. Is anything impossible for God? I'll prove it to you. Slide number two. Look what it says. I want y'all to get this in the word, man. Slide number two. He says, he says, he says, he loves me so much, but what he says is his will, not mine. Yeah. And what is God's will for every one of us? That none perish, that none be lost, but all receive the glory of God. That's his will. But not my will, his will. I'm trying to make his plan, but look what he said. He says in Mark chapter 14, Jesus cried out. He says, I'm a father. He cried out. Everything is possible for you. What's impossible with God? So if I'm in a situation, listen to this, I'm going to help you all right here. If I'm in a situation in my life right now that's keeping me from really serving the Lord, why would I not ask God for help? If he could be a lawyer in the courtroom, a doctor in the sick room, a friend that's taking close to the brother, yeah. come on now. Yeah. And if you're broke, you go have you fish and get gold out of a box of a fish. Come on now. Is that anything too hard for God? No. So you're telling me that this situation is keeping me from really serving God? That's a lie. Yeah. You're telling me this circumstance is keeping me from really walking in my potential in God? That's a lie. You can't work. I, I don't have enough money. That's a lie. All things are possible for those who believe in the Lord. Y'all don't pay money. Who does no money? So you can't use it as an excuse. But I don't have enough money. That's a lie. Praise the Lord. Woo! Come on now. Well, I don't know the right people. That's a lie.
decisions we got to make.
But we all got to learn from our mistakes and get back in, in the game. Jeremiah says, he says, when you, when you, when you fall, you got to get back up. If you're going down the wrong road, turn around and go back the right way. Amen. Amen. If you made a mistake, admit to it and move forward. That's what was there. He says, he says, he is not eager to punish, but he's, he's ready to give a second chance. That's found in Joel chapter 2, verse 13. God is not automatically waiting to punish you. He wants to give you a second chance. Yeah. But you got to choose God over the circumstance. You got to choose God over the situation. He don't want to punish you, but if he have to, he will. Amen. He will. And the last point is there. He says, and it is my will can get others. But his will is to save us. Amen. See, that's the love I know about my Jesus. But remember, it is, it is his will, not mine. So this is what I want to close this sermon by saying this. If you want Jesus over yourself, you got to choose. He said, now choose today whom you will serve. And when you choose his word, over, over everything else, he will make room for your gifts. He will work out your problems. He will make everything that's out of control, he'll bring it back under control. That's the God I serve. He's the God that made this whole universe. And I had people tell me, Pastor, you don't understand my situation. I know this, I've been in situations. I've been in circumstances. But I know there's nothing too big for God. Amen. Stand to your feet this morning. Come on, brother. I'm, I got to get y'all out of here on time. See, I want y'all to grow this morning. It's his word and my choice. It's his will and not mine. Amen. And remember something. He don't want to punish you, but he will. You can't keep living in sin and don't expect to deal with the consequences. All right. Come on. You can't keep doing the same old thing over and over and expect different results. At some point, you got to make your mind up. Ask for me. Say it with me. Ask for me and my family. See, see, when you say my house, it kind of leads you in that, in that constructive disposition. But with the version I got, he says, ask for me and my family. Who's part of my family? Every one of you. Amen. Thank you, baby. <laughs> Let me tell you about the privilege of being a part of my family. The only hidden privilege of being part of my family. Number one, you have access to a lawyer. <laughs> you have access to an accountant. You have access to somebody who has name recognition and, and they can get some things done. That's the important part of my family. So you can't tell me it can't be worked out. I know everybody. I'm getting there. I can't preach. <laughs> and more importantly, because you're part of my family, you're part of my household. And if I'm saved, I'm sanctified, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, he's going to answer my prayer. He may not answer yours right away, but he's going to answer mine. Amen. Amen. Come on, now. Y'all know the people y'all go to. Y'all know who y'all really need. Y'all know who to call. But you don't think about it, but you know Auntie and Uncle, Uncle Willie. Amen. And anybody, when you're broken, you really need somebody, you know who to call. But you don't call Jesus, baby. You want to call him. Uncle John, Uncle John, you know Katrina, husband John, that's when her daughters need help, and they need somebody, you know, they go to Katrina, but Katrina got to go to John, because that's her husband. Tree, she, Tree can talk all the all she wants, but she still got to go to Dexter, because he's the head of the house. Am I right? That's right. can make all kinds of promises and commitments, but she still got to go to Dexter. You get what I'm just saying? See, see the kill? She really the pastor of the church, y'all. Y'all know that. 
She ain't really the unofficial pastor of the church. Y'all know that, right? Because I can say a whole lot, but I got to still go home and get permission. So today, we're part of the family, right? All I'm saying is, if you're part of the family, you got benefits. Who need help today? Who need help today? Come right now. Come on. Come right now. 